Um, Bundy is saying Russell Wilson appears to have a to be a, have been a system quarterback in Seattle. This is an underreaction to the week that was. Denver appears to have threatened their immediate future with a signing. So what do we do? Just blow up the Broncos? What are we doing? Poor Lewis Hamilton. Yeah, yeah. Some things we're underreacting to. Pat McAfee having his mouth open when he jumped in that water. And this, take a look at the Giants. No one in the NFL is having more fun than this team. And it matters. This is, of course, the Victor Cusack. And he did a good job. I'll have to ask old Victor about this. Uh, then you had Dable and Wink post game. They were super excited. Look at them. Look at you. Super excited. They're having more fun than anybody. The coaches are in on it. And we're also seeing raw motion, too. Take a look. And, and the camera. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. No, wait. Hey, hey, hey. uh, but, uh. And why does it matter? Because I do, in fact, think in 2022, the Belichickian, hard nose, no days off, all business approach is a bit of an anomaly, and it does not work for most teams. If you look at recent history, the teams that surprise and they go on runs are usually the ones that are embracing camaraderie and embracing fun in the process. Think about that 2017 Saints team. They milked every defensive celebration. They run, they're taking pictures, the whole thing. 2019, Niners, Kittle, his antics, the T-shirt on T-shirt step. Remember the Eagles with their dog masks. We're looking at the Eagles now with their Batman capes and all of that going on. The Bengals, Burrow, the press conference, the quotes, the you know the wardrobe. When you look really at the way this league is going, and you remove the old men and women yelling at a cloud about what's going on, this is an element. Fun is an element necessary for success in this NFL. And so that's one of my underreactions for this week. Let's keep them coming here because everyone loves to overreact, but let's get to, into some of it and let's get into um, the Tennessee Titans, shall we? Okay, yeah, let's do it. They're coming off a bye. So literally no one is talking about them, but they, you know, Reigning number one seed in the AFC wins three straight. Derrick Henry looks like he's starting to cook again, averaging 140 total yards per game, four touchdowns over the course of this win streak. And even in this bye week, they've generated plenty of headlines. Look at, but it's headlines, but not really, right? No one's talking about this. I'm going to go ahead and say this is one of my favorite players of all time, Delaney Walker, deciding to officially retire as a Titan. And it's very fitting because the three-time Pro Bowler sort of perfectly embodies what this team is. Understated, he was always out there and performed. He was tough as nails. And he meant the world to the city of Nashville. He went through immense tragedy that was very much connected to what was going on with his team, uh, or at least bonded with, in memory with what's going on with his team. And then he has stood for, um, you know, no drunk driving. He has stood for things. And he did everything the right way. I've always been a huge fan of Delaney Walker, one of the first jerseys I ever purchased. So congrats on his retirement to this perennially and weekly and daily underreacted to team. And they're getting a new stadium. That's another big headline. Uh, they've got funding for $2.2 billion dome that was approved. So we may see, you know, you know what this means, Super Bowl Nashville, which I'd be so here for in the future. All right. The second thing that I think everyone's underreacting to is George Kittle and his comments. Oh, he's so fun and he's great and he should be in the WWE. Well, over the past two days, when, you know, he kept it real. And when we're talking about the Niners, even on the show, we had analyst Mark Schlereth on Monday and uh, we talked about the San Francisco injuries were a big part of that story. Take a look. I know they're as deep as anybody in the National Football League, but when you lose six players and you lose guys, um, you know, the likes of starting corner Emmanuel Mosley, Nick Bosa, uh, Eric Armstead, Javon Kinlaw, and that takes its toll. So we're talking injuries. Darius Butler also alluded to, well, it's injuries. And when you think about the Niners and, and how talented they are and anything that could get in the way of their success, it's always the injuries. Kittle, though, had a different take. I mean, you could use that as an excuse, but I mean, we're the San Francisco 49ers. We have a standard that we play at. I mean, we play at a very high level, a lot of energy, 100% effort on every single play. And, um, you know, I haven't watched the tape yet, but I don't know if we gave that today, you know, at every single position. Very unkittle in a great way. I like it. Being injured is an excuse everyone makes for this team, for every team. He's not letting that be the story or set into the locker room. And yes, the injuries are vast. You can totally make that case. It's bad. Eric Armstead and Bosa and Trent Williams would be the best guy out there, especially, you know, Mark Schlereth said it, anybody would say it. But then, 
I don't know. Let's let's jump off this full screen because you just gotta look at what the Giants are doing. And I could point to many teams, but you know, the Giants fans and the Giants can be sitting here making every conceivable injury excuse, but instead they have changed their plan of attack and they have found a way to get it done. So listen, it is Game of Thrones in the NFC West. Everyone's running around without appendages, children are crying, it's ugly, but the throne is there for the taking. Everyone is still alive in the thing. And I think it comes down to who figures it out first. Is it the Niners? Do they figure out a way to attack with their injuries? Do they, you know, Kittle questioning their effort? We're not talking about this enough. 49ers Rams this weekend, uh, which has always been a fun one-sided joust. So we'll see how it shakes out. All right. I want your underreactions at Up and Adam Show. Carmen Vitale is coming up. But the third thing that we are underreacting to is, are we not doing Trubisky? Now I'm confused because I'm confused. Anybody want to speak to me? Are we so we're not do we're not doing Trubisky then? No one's listening in the control room. No one's listening in the control room. No, we don't want to do Trubisky now because okay, are we doing it? I guess we are. Uh, poor Trubisky, let's just re be real here. He's gotten the shaft on our show. We wanted to talk about him on Monday. It got pushed to Tuesday. We wanted to talk about him on Tuesday. It got pushed to Wednesday. I want to talk about him today. And then we start going to the break instead of talking about him. But we're going to give him love because he was nearly perfect after Kenny Pickett went out with that concussion. We are underreacting to his potential second story to his second act to his second rewrite because we, we've been keep wanting to, it to happen we don't know if it will but he was awesome game changing touchdown toss to chase claypool game ending 10 play four minute 38 second drive that said see ya tom brady more drama about you you, you know brady's dealing with a, a, a whirlwind at the tornado of the drama at the hands of mitchell trubisky which is amazing um so he was sort of unceremoniously benched against the Jets. And now it was really awesome to see him sort of get his moment. He got to go scorched earth and he sends Brady packing the Steelers season saved now from the brink of oblivion, hopefully saved. And we don't really know how things are going to play out here. Tomlin uh, is very much being Mike Tomlin about this. But the truth is Mitch gave the Steelers fans a moment they won't soon forget. A bright spot at the very least. So a uh, big time decision for old Tomlin and we will now go to break because we gave Mitchell Trubisky his love in the sloppiest segment we've had in the last 15 of 32 shows. But that's okay, we're still learning here. We had Pat McAfee, Carmen Vitale is in studio. I wanted to get up and greet her, but I can't because my mic pack is off, it's fine. We'll be back, we'll be back. <laughs> 